face-off. Shoots it deflected right in. Peter Angelo save rebound. Stastny stopped by Peter Angelo. I don't believe that save. Even as Peter Stastny. He can't believe the save that Peter Angelo just made on him as Frankie Sparkly. Now that maneuver there to stop and rob Peter Stastny. He should get 5-10 to 10 for that. Oh. Hello and welcome to episode 99 of Tendy Talk, presented by the Hockey Podcast Network and the BLPA Podcast Networks. I'm your host Joe, better known as Wash Up Goalie on social media. This week I chat with Darren Hansen, a goalie who has subbed for me quite a bit, but is famous in goalie circles for playing while wearing a 70s era fiberglass Mike Leute mask. So without further ado, let's get to the conversation with Darren. Well, Darren, hey, thanks for joining me on uh, the podcast. It's uh, fun to actually talk to you because you, you tend to uh, sub for me, so we've never really seen each other face to face. But my my teammates have seen you. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the tough part about being everybody's sub is I never actually get to meet uh, the friends that I end up talking to a lot on. Uh, on the computer or, you know, via chats, this there and the other thing, you never get to meet anybody that you sub for. So this is actually pretty cool to be able to see you and, and meet you. Well, and, it, and it's I'm not going to lie. It's a little annoying when you sub for me because that first game back, my teammates are like, so you're not going to drink a beer between periods. Like yeah. Aaron does. I'm like, well, no, I want to see one puck. You guys know I need all the help I can get. And <laughs> I need to only see one puck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some, I don't know. My my style is a little more unique than most uh, when it comes to a lot of things, but uh, yeah, you know, having a beer in between periods is one thing. Or uh, I, I, I've uh, I've noticed if I have a beer before the game, that does help me. I, I don't know why. It's it's not like I get overly um, uh, anxious or anything for a game, but just something about it just relaxes me just enough. Uh, yeah to where I, I don't get into my own head. I don't know what it is. Uh, so that, that, that always helps, but I don't know. I've, I've, I can't say I've ever had a beer during a game um, in part because it's hard to keep one on the, on the net. <laughs> yeah, so, for sure. Although uh, growing up in Chicago, there were some beer leagues where they had the beer in the water bottles, but uh, that, that's a little tough. You don't want, you don't want the splash on the face and then get all sticky. Right, yeah, and I've never been one to uh, to have a water bottle on on the net anyway. Um, I don't need another target uh, yeah. other than my face for them to shoot up high. So, <laughs> well, and I, I've had more than one water bottle destroyed in warmups. It's funny, my teammates can't hit the water bottle during a game, but they sure can during warmups. I don't know what what the deal is. Well, it's uh, it's adult league hockey, and you know it's it's the face or the nuts or upper top, you know, top corners. One of the one of the three. Yeah, it's. I, I think w- when it gets to the beer leagues, we all know the guys on our team that are going to be good at give, putting the pucks where we want them in warmups, and then you see the guy coming down where it's like, should I just step out of the net? Because I know it's going to be over the crossbar to begin with. And most likely at my head. So is it even worth trying with that guy? Yeah, I understand that. And it, it's it's tough, especially for guys like us playing in, uh, like for me, especially playing in several different leagues, like the upper echelon leagues, they kind of, you kind of have upper, upper echelon players that kind of know how hockey's yep. supposed to go. And then you play, you know, in the lower tiers and you got guys who know, guys who don't. And some reason it just doesn't compute with some guys and there yep. you are. The, the well, target. And, and even I've noticed, you know, when I skate in some of the hockey finder leagues over, you know, at Fogarty or whatnot, it's not that they don't know. It's that they don't have the control. They're just That's trying true. to hit the net. They, they don't have the control. And I've said it many times. It's much easier as a goalie to play up than it is to play down because of yeah. things like that. Uh, I 100% agree. There's things during the games that should happen. And a lot of time at the lower level, it doesn't happen the way it should. And man, you're, you're either trying to play the way you're supposed to, and it just doesn't work out and you look like a fool, but. Yeah. uh, Perfect example of that. I, I was playing in a hockey finder league and there was a two on one. And so I'm, I'm playing the shot, but I'm ready for the pass. Guy passes across. I'm like, okay. And that guy quickly it does a give and go. And I'm like, okay, so this should be a shot here. So I stack the pads. 
well, they fumble the pass. Oh, no. And now they get control and pass it back. I'm like, well, now I'm SOL and I look bad because of the skill level. And so it's, yeah, you, you have to adjust, especially especially the higher we've played, like you said, there's things that should happen and we play to that. And then that doesn't happen. And we, we, uh, we look bad, but you know, what are you going to do? I, I've said it for a long time. As long as we don't get hurt, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it always keeps you on your toes. And that's why I like playing uh, all levels because yeah. you, you never know what to expect. And you know, most of the time when you're playing at a lower level, you're you're on a team that the goaltender is either tired or <laughs> <laughs> you're on the last place team and it's you're, all, you're playing the first place team tonight. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not going to make it, you know. <laughs> well, and I, I'm one of those weird goalies where I'm a stats guy. I'm an analyst by trade. So okay. and I, I, I do the videos. So I, I put the, the camera up behind my net and I keep my own stats, not because I care about it because that's who i am yeah but it's interesting because when i look at my team like this year i was averaging 35 or almost 40 shots a game 38.8 to be exact and it's like that's not supposed to happen in the beer leagues so yeah you know it's like i i'm i'm active uh you know and so when i look at the goals against i'm like yeah higher than i would like but on par for what that should be for that many shots. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're, you gotta look at the save percentage more than anything. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've seen the uh, stop the cold pending game day app, but Brian DeCord out of Boston university, he he put it together and they have a new metric. It's uh, expected goals against minus goals against. So you, you track the, and I've gotten to this point just because I'm curious of it being the stats guy. I track all my shots based off of that app now to okay. see, okay, if I let in five goals in the game, but the app says I should have let in six, I don't feel so bad about those five goals I let in, even though we yeah. lost five to four. It's like, well, I, I actually played better than I should have. Um, it, it's a pretty cool app because they they did a bunch of you know homework before they release it. And it's like based off of these situations – the puck should go in this percentage time. It, I won't bore people with the math and all that stuff behind it, but it, it it's uh, made me feel better. You know, over the course of the season, I averaged about letting in one more goal a game than I should have, um, which, eh, okay. Yeah, know, that's, where, that's where stats can get muddy. The, uh, yeah, well, it, yeah, it can get muddy, but that's <laughs> where, you know, you got to start – looking at the intangibles, you know, baseball, it's a perfect example where everybody's looking at the stats these days, but then you got a guy like Joe Madden. He, he takes the stats, but he's like, but you can't ignore what the eye sees. So I look at most of our games, we had seven, eight skaters while the other team had two to three lines. That's always fun. That doesn't translate into the stats. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah. So I digress. I want to get to the questions I normally ask. And the first question I always ask everybody is, how did you get started in this great game of hockey? Uh, Well, I was fortunate enough to have a dad who uh, loved the game. Um, As a really, really young kid, he was young as well. My dad was 19 when I was born. My mom was 17. And he was just trying to make it and ended up coaching a couple of teams. refing a lot of hockey when I was a little kid. So I was always at the rink, no matter what, if I wanted to be there, if it was frigid, uh, you know, some of those rinks up North, uh, I remember distinctly like Mora ice <laughs> arena yes. back in the, in the late eighties, early nineties, uh, it was extremely cold, but you know, dad needed to have his little buddy there and I was happy to oblige and, uh, turn into, well, do you want to play? And I was, I was super excited to, to get the gear on. And I remember being as nervous as I've ever been almost in my entire life, like losing sleep the night before my first practice <laughs> because I didn't, Oh, I don't know how to put the gear on. Right. I don't know what to do or who to talk to, but that's, uh, you know, that's how I got started in the game and it, it progressed quite a bit from there. So did you put the pads on right away or was that kind of a progression? 
No, uh, my dad was a goalie growing up and that was the last spot he wanted me to be in. <laughs> so I remember I that. I remember in, uh, it was ponies back then. Now it's like C or D mites. Um, I didn't play as a really little kid. Uh, we couldn't afford it. And then something happened to where I got a bunch of gear and all of a sudden I was playing and, um, in ponies, they gave us the option, you know, we have a guy who wants to play goalie all the time, but every now and again, you can switch in. And this is when we had the old Brown Cooper gloves and the Brown yeah. leather pads. And my, uh, my dad was coaching B2 Bantams at the time. Um, I put the pads on cause I wanted to play in the next game. And he brought me out to an outdoor practice and had his Bantams beat the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> what what a dad br- bringing the the mite out to a Bantam practice trial by fire. <laughs> yeah, and I did. Uh, I did. I feel as if I did pretty good that day. But then the game the game came. I'll never forget it. We were playing at Columbia Arena. Uh, I was in Columbia One. I was playing for my team was the Stars. I forget who we were playing, but. I just completely crapped the bed and uh, we ended up losing like nine to two and I didn't want to play goalie after that. So I went on to have a, a, a very good career um, as a defenseman growing up. Uh, I played throughout high school. I was on Blaine's varsity team as a defenseman, played junior hockey uh, while I was in high school. And actually, high school is where I started putting the pads on a little more often. I, uh, I've kind of been the same size since eighth grade. So I'm 5'10", and I've been this way forever. I was always a huge kid growing up, and everybody caught me. And uh, my buddy of mine's older brother played adult league, got hurt, and said, you fit the pads. How about you jump in the net? And <laughs> That's where I've stayed ever since. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so anybody who plays out at the Super Rink and has seen you, you're hard to miss. In fact, every now and then there's there's the pictures on the GGSU Facebook group like, this guy is out here playing this way. Like, what the heck's wrong with him? Because you play with an old school fiberglass mask from the 70s. Like, have you always played with the old mask or you know what's the story behind that so i didn't always play with the old mask but i've just i've always had a love for the position the goaltending position has always been just the the gear alone was something that i loved and uh while i was in middle school and high school i had friend uh my best friend was a goalie his older brother was the one who got me into it And I was lucky enough to, um, and if anybody can see, uh, this is what I use, a Mike Louis replica. And yes, I take shots to the head all the time. And yeah, every now and again, it hurts, but it's not that bad. Um, But I've always had an affinity and appreciation for the old pros and uh, everything they went through. I was lucky enough to have that friend who got me into goaltending had connections to uh, some of the equipment managers in the NHL back in the, uh, the early and mid nineties. So the first pair of leg pads I ever used were Bob Asenzo's. Um, the chest protector and pants that I still use were Garth Snow's from 1995. Uh, his chest protector, I have finally retired. Now I'm using an old Chris Osgood from the late 90s. It's an eagle. Um, and I'm still wearing the uh, the Garth Snow pants that are stripped, shredded. And <laughs> I, finally, I finally found a new set of Heatons that are exactly the same. And I, I've, uh, I'm waiting anxiously for their arrival because you can literally see my legs through through my pants at this point so (laughs) it'll be nice to put those in so the mask um i let's see i was bored it was uh right when the pandemic hit and i i was in dire need of something new because the the old eddie that i have 
Um, the fiberglass was completely shattered and broken on, on the forehead because I, again, am a little bit crazy and I'll headbutt the puck whenever it's coming. Uh, I don't shy away from it. Um, so the forehead was gone. The, ma the, the mask itself was dented to my face. And I saw this Louis replica or Louis uh, replica on Facebook Marketplace. Saw a picture of the guy who owned it previously, and I said, "I have to have it." And <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna probably make a lot of people crazy because I wear it because you know it's not safe. This, that, and the other thing. But uh, you know, I haven't. I haven't really gotten any flack from anybody saying you can't wear that. Um, yes, I get that you're crazy. How can you wear that thing? How can you see? But it's it's such a good conversation starter. Um, and it's such such a cool piece to have. I'm just so happy with it. And I'm, I'm really, really excited every time I see uh, another person in the corner sheepishly holding their phone up. Uh, trying to make sure that I don't see that they're taking pictures yeah. of me, but I see it all that's, the time. That's been me. <laughs> and I, I appreciate it. Uh, and I think it gives those guys from the seventies and sixties, um, some, some extra love and yeah. admiration that some people are still out here, um, willing to use the gear that, that they did. And, uh, I'm I'm having a great time with it. Yeah, well, I mean, my first set of equipment was association equipment from the '70s. You know, the chest protector was a two-piece. You yeah. know, I, I I learned how to play with that stuff, and so yeah, I've got appreciation now. I love my new stuff. I mean, you followed me for a while, so you know, up until this time last year, I was playing with stuff from the '90s. Oh yeah, um, and you know, my chest protector is still from the '90s. I got big bruise on my shoulder <laughs> and one on my chest from this weekend's game because you mm -hmm. feel the puck it you play a little different when you have that fear of getting hit you know um and yeah th those old guys that they have an appreciation because even though, even though i got the new stuff i still play that old style yeah um, in, in fact i i forget who it was that you know when, when i got the new stuff they, they were asking me like are you worried you're not going to be able to stack the pads or play the old style anymore is like no, I'm still going <laughs> to, that's why I got custom stuff. So, you know, I didn't get the two inch thigh rise for that reason. I got a one inch. I want to still be able to do that stuff. Right. Um, you know, you, you can still play that old style with, with the new equipment if you order it right. Um, you know, but the, the kids today, they, they don't want to play that way. They, they want to just play, play a modern style, modern blocking style and not the old athletic style. Yeah, um, that's that's a style that's just not for me. Yeah, no, I, I'm not good enough to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that's one of the main reasons. So back to the mask because every time it shows up on GGSU, within the first five comments, somebody always asks like, "How can you play with that? How do they allow you to play with it? Have you ever had a ref kind of come up to you and be like, I don't know if I should let you play, or are they just like, if you're dumb enough to wear it, we're gonna let you.'" Uh, I've had uh, a couple instances where I was asked if <laughs> I had something different or if it was certified and anything can be certified. If you find a, a helmet somewhere and grab a heck sticker off of it and throw it on a mask. I mean, uh, certified it, it is what it is. You can, there's always a loophole to a system, but um, uh, I've never, not been able to play because of it. I've been asked not to wear it in some situations, but it's either you want a goalie or you don't, to be honest, I'm going to wear it. Um, I do have my other mask, but again, it's completely falling apart and I'm actually probably more protected with this fiberglass mask than I am with the one that I had before. <laughs> well, and you know, it, at some point it was certified. <laughs> yeah. They didn't ask if it was certified right now. <laughs> right. And this it, it's, a, it's a replica. It was made in 2020. Uh, I got it in 2020. Uh, so it's it's new fiberglass anyway. So mm -hmm. if that makes anybody feel any better about it, then then there you go. It's, it's new fiberglass. And it's got uh, some padding in it. Not a lot, but some. And I love it. I absolutely love it. 
Yeah, you know, I, I thought I would love to get uh, a Murray Bannerman mask like that because I actually went to Murray Bannerman's Learn to Skate when I was first starting out, and I think that's one of the best, you know, fiberglass masks out there look wise. And the old Tony Esposito where he had the cage around the eyes, like those. Yeah. If I were to play with one or the other, it'd be those two, uh, just because I love their their look. Um, and. I, I mean, you've subbed for me, so you know the level. I, I I could get away with it at in my league. You know, I get hit a couple times a year in the head, but it, it rarely has it been where I'd be like, "Whew, that was a stinger." Uh, I'd be comfortable wearing it in my league. Yeah, and that's it, that's more or less uh, why I can wear it all the time is because I I know who I'm playing with or against a lot mm-hmm. of the time. I've subbed for everybody. I've been doing this for about twenty years now. And if I haven't subbed for you, uh, you haven't been a team that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, you know, and-, and I know what I can get away with, what I can't. Uh, I'm a guy who will glove a puck and I'm able to punt it from the crease to center ice. So I, I throw that little move out there as well. And that gets a lot of attention. And, you know, it's just it's little things like this that keep the game a little more interesting if they're, you know, for the three or four fans that are there for our games, it's a little more fun to watch. And, you know, the refs don't see stuff like this every day. The other guys don't see yeah. stuff like this every day. So it's a lot of fun to to pull something new out. Well, and especially, you know, the, the leagues over at the super rink, you know, like you said, they're happy to have a goalie. And if you can entertain them, uh, yeah. th- they like it all the more because when, when I break out the two pad stack or something, you know, the refs and, and the other team, you know, they always come up and say something about it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah you want to win a game, but same. T- we're all out there just because we're old guys wanting to play a kid's game. So, you know, if, if, if it's entertaining, who cares what the scoreboard says? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's a lot more fun just to play and have a good time. It's like uh, – Almost every time I go out there, it's like playing in the backyard with my buddies again. When yeah. I started this goaltending adventure, you know, you do <laughs> you you do some goofy move or you <clears throat> you flash the leather real hard, and everybody gets a kick out of it. And it's it, it's more fun for either side, whether or not you know you're playing for an A league somewhere or yeah. you're or you're playing at the D level. Uh, it's it's just so much more fun to throw some flair out there and and just have oh, fun. Yeah. You know, in fact, my last game, I, I made a scorpion save and the, it, the whistle wasn't even blown, but the guy that I made the scorpion save on mid play is coming, patting me on the back. He's like, I'm not even mad. Like <laughs> I, I, I'd rather see that than score. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, I think I lost you for a second here. Hopefully it's not that. There we go. I found you again. Uh, But, uh, you know, you primarily subbing, because I know in one of the posts you were looking for kind of a regular team to play for still. It's a little easier to be a little more out there and do some of the extra stuff when it's not your regular team. Because if it doesn't work out, and you lose the game, you're like, yeah, it's just a sub. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't have to face the wrath next week. But in doing that more and more, you get more comfortable with it so that when you do do it, it's like, I'm actually pretty good at this. Right. Yeah. And I'm I'm one to stack the pads a lot. Uh, I play kind of a 90s style, um, more like a, a Curtis Joseph. Um, Same. But uh, I... I like to, when I can, make stand-up saves and and kick the leg out and make that big, you know, turn turning your toe outward and and pushing the puck into the, the corner. Old skate save, yeah, yeah. Those are those are fun to pull out. And like you said, if you screw up, you look like a complete moron. But yep. at the same time, <laughs> if you do it enough, you practice it enough, then you can make the save, and everybody's ooh, and it's just fun. That that happened to me in this week's game. The guy was coming down from my glove side, so it's always the easiest one on a breakaway to, you know, do the flying poke check. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting ready to do it. Well, it was a guy that I've played against him for a number of years. So he saw what was coming and he, he snuck it by me before I had the chance to, but it's like most any other guy in the league, I, I would have caught him, at, you know, with the flying poke check, but it was like, all right, that one's on me guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> trying, for... trying to switch it up a little bit and it, it yeah. backfired. Those can really be embarrassing moments. And I've had plenty of those. Uh, I'll try and do the punt and uh, yeah. it'll go straight up in the air or I'll miss it completely and it'll land right in front of me. And yeah, it, you got to take the good with the bad. But I'd rather yeah. have, fun, have fun and throw some flair out there for the guys to either pat me on the pads for or, or give me grief for in the parking lot after. Well, it's, it's like in football when the coach goes for it on fourth and inches, you know, at a weird point in the game and, and the announcers will say, well, if it works out, they'll be a genius. If it doesn't, everybody's going to be second guessing. And it's kind of like that when we, we do those things. And, and yeah, like you said, it gives us something to talk about in the parking lot, whether it works or doesn't. Yeah. Yep. We're going to talk about it. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I think we could talk about your mask and some of those antics for a long time because, you know, like I said, those are the things. When everybody sees you at the rink, yeah, we're, us goalies are in the corner taking the pictures. Uh, you know, the, the teams you, you sub for, when us goalies come back, they're like, uh, yeah, we, we kind of like the other guy better than you. He has more personality. I'm like, gee, thanks, guys. I brought the beer this week. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're like, yeah, that's why we're going to keep you. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but then you throw the mask in there. And, and like you said, every time it comes up on GGSU, people are like, I love it. But, um, and it's kind of funny because if, if you haven't piped up in, in that comment, I'm usually over there like, yep, I know this guy. He, he subs for me. <laughs> He's real. He does this. It, he didn't just do it for the one game. Cause like I got an old Hashi helmet from when I played in college and yep. once in a great while, like if I'm playing in a tournament, like, I played in the um, uh, sort of sick hockey classic. Now they, it's the goons for good, which I know you played in this weekend. Yep. Like, yeah, I broke the Hashik helmet out for a game uh, back, you know, during the first year of that. It's like, yeah, I, I'll do that every now and then, but like you, you do this every week. It, it's like you said, you bring the other one just in case, but that, that's your go-to and, and that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it is my go-to and there's uh there's a little bit to go along with why I, I like to wear it more now. Uh, things have gotten a little more personal for me. And the jersey I wear is uh, another intricate piece uh, to my gear. I, I had the one jersey I wore for about 20 years of my career. It was just your regular old gray Minnesota Wild Adult League jersey mm -hmm. I wore. Um, over this past year, I have gone through... Uh, a barrage of, of surgeries. So um, I had a, my leg, my left leg out of nowhere started feeling terrible uh, October last year. And I uh, was told that I had a bad back. Mm -hmm. So I had a discectomy, which led to uh, a weird thing called complex regional pain syndrome. And what that meant for me was uh, the nerves going to my left foot would either keep all the blood in it or push all the blood out of it and not let any in. Interesting. Uh, so uh, the day before Thanksgiving last year, um, I had just gotten over this back surgery. I threw blood clots after the surgery. So I was in the hospital for about a week. Um, my foot's doing awful. I'm still... I'm still trying to get out and play, uh, but my my left foot started to die, and I actually had the my left big toe removed on the day before Thanksgiving last year. So that's why my number is negative one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Monday night team that I've played for uh, since I, I'm. I'm not even kidding you. I was 17 years old when I started on the, my Monday night team and I've been playing with them ever since. And my best friend from kindergarten for Christmas last year got me that Jersey. Uh, it's a picture of one of my teammates smoking a cigarette through my mask. Uh, and that's the, 
that's the uh, the chest press, and they gave me the captain's patch forever, and I am now negative one for the rest of my life because I only got nine toes. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Instead of going with the the easy number nine, the negative one, I, I like that. Yeah. Um, you know, but but you mentioned the back issues, and and I know that that had you off the ice for quite a while. Um, you know, and it was just recently you got back on the ice, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, this weekend was my first uh, my first venture back. Uh, in I had a uh, uh, spinal fusion L4 L5 are fused together now, and I just got back on the ice for the first time this weekend. How how did it feel? You know, were you sore? And I asked because I slipped. I think it was my L4 L5 two three years ago when I was building my retaining wall for our backyard rink. Mm-hmm. Um, thank God, knock on wood, I haven't needed any surgery or anything. But how? How has the rehab gone, and how did it feel getting back on the ice? Rehab was uh, really good. I I started playing against doctor's orders, but obviously, <laughs> uh, with everything else that you you see <laughs> with uh, with me and my personality, you tell me not to do something, I'm going to do it. But uh, yeah. I am 12 weeks out from surgery. Um, at uh, two days after surgery. I started walking a ton and that's what I've been doing ever since I had that surgery is just walking a lot and building slowly building strength back. I wasn't able to lift, bend, uh, lift, bend or twist for eight weeks. But once that was, uh, once, once those restrictions were taken off, I started lifting really light again. And I was actually pretty nervous about this weekend jumping in, but since it was a, a charity, event i knew it was just going to be lighthearted and fun and i could go out and just have a good time and if i hurt yep. i could stand i could play the stand-up style if i needed to and if uh things felt good i would just play my normal style and things things actually felt really really good uh it was awesome to get back on the ice again let me tell you yeah um, there's a little residual soreness yesterday and today but uh you know going out to yeah. shelter the driveway made it all better <laughs> yeah well and that, that's the normal sore there, there's the good sore <laughs> and then there's the oh this is a good sore right uh, and, and you're right fun. that good that uh group you know that those tournaments it's it's a good pace you know it, it's it's kind of like a d league at the super rink where it's like it's yep. a good pace but it's good nature they're, they're not going to go hard up to the net or anything like that it was probably the perfect skate to get back into it. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I see it, too. It was a, a perfect uh, re-entrance to the game. It was it gave me a lot more confidence in, in being able to step back on the ice again after such a major surgery, uh, such a major year yeah. with you. And to step back out there, play exactly like I did before surgery, it just it felt great. And man, I cannot tell you how happy I am with being back on the ice. Now, I have to ask the important question because you said it was against doctor's orders. How happy was your wife when you told her you were going to play hockey? Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, but- I, got, I got back with my gear and she knew uh, what was going on and, you know, I I didn't get read the right act too bad, but, uh, you know, just, she, she's a good gal. She, we, uh, we actually got married three weeks ago and, uh, we've been together for 15 and a half years. So she knows what she got into with me and, you know, she wasn't too happy, but at the same time I laid on the couch for a day and she just, uh, well, you you're definitely good enough to uh, clean the banisters and dust the, <laughs> the vacuum again. So if you can play hockey, you can do everything else. And, you know, yeah. I agree with her on that. It's time to get back on the horse. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask this. You were together 15 years, but Chiss now got married. What well, changed? You got to make you were sure. like, You know, n- yeah, not now. I think it's, time to commit you know after 15 years you took it took you that long to, to know for sure uh I, I knew for sure the first time i saw her so that that yeah. part was just a moot point but we uh we were really young uh i was i think i was 
22. He was 21 uh, when we got together. And actually, within six weeks, we were expecting. So uh, <laughs> we were just, we're so, uh, I don't want to say infatuated with each other because it took a lot of more work on my end to convince her that I was the right guy. But, uh, you know, you, you have one kid, you start a life, you get a house, you, uh, yeah. All of a sudden, uh, I buy a house, and kid number two's on the way, and job stuff changes here and there, and you know we were just in a good spot to to finally make it happen, and um, we were we were hoping to get this done before her her grandmother passed away, and luckily we were able to uh, get married before her grandmother passed away, and actually, uh, so November fifth we got. Sorry, we got married. <laughs> yeah, I, as somebody who's been married 18 years, I'm gonna let you know. Don't forget that day. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I remember because we got married the same day as Game One of the 2004 World Series, the year Boston won it. So I, I have to, you know, go with the things that make it easy for me to Good remember. Mother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we actually got married just in time. We uh, had a family honeymoon with my, my two boys. I got a 14 year old and 11 year old boy. We went down to Florida for a week oh, fun. Um, and we came back and, and grandma got put in hospice and she, uh, she was, she just passed away on Saturday, which uh, oh, sorry to hear that. It's, it's a sad deal, but uh, it's, it's good. She went quick. She had end stage COPD, so she didn't suffer at all. She was quick to get into hospice and, uh, everything kind of turned out for the better. Yeah. And, you know, I, I give you grief, but my sister and her husband, they were the same way that, you know, they got together. She was still in school. Then she got pregnant while still in school and everything else. And it wasn't until their third child was on the way that they're like, you know what, we'll get married now. And the main reason they got married is because my now brother-in-law uh, needed to have surgery. And they're like, you know, for the insurance, it's a lot easier to have you on the insurance if we're married than if we're just deemed life partners like the uh, car insurance company had deemed them. Yep. <laughs> so they're like, it's a little bit easier that way. But, you know, to them, it, th there was other things that were more important than the piece of paper. They knew they were committed. Yeah. And we were the same way. You know, I mean, we were we always, I had always called her my wife from, yep. from the first few months. And, uh, you know, I didn't think it would mean as much as it did. Uh, but I was actually just reflecting about this last night about, man, this, this means so much more to me than I ever thought it would, which is, uh, really cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. a married man. It's my wife and man, I, I'm looking at things, even it's, even though it's been a few weeks, you know, it, it has changed things a little bit for the better in my mind anyway. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Yeah, my wife and I, we met when we were both 19 and uh, six months later, we were engaged. You know, we knew r right away that uh, it was the deal, but we wanted to wait till we were both done with school. So we, we were engaged for what? I think four years. Um, is, oh, as we both you, know. you know, yeah. So we, we've been together 22, but only married 18. Congratulations uh, on 22 years. That's a huge accomplishment nowadays. Things, uh, things aren't all the way they used to be. No, it's it's crazy when when I tell people they're like you don't look old enough to be with somebody for twenty two years. It's like I take that as a compliment because you know I'm pushing forty two here. Um, yeah, yeah that, that that's what happens when you meet that person young, and it just it works. And so, sometimes my wife says, you know, she she's upset she met me so young because she didn't get her get the chance to you know have her young fun twenties. It's like, well, but you, you got more time with me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think uh, since guys like you and I, we started early with getting families together and whatnot. Uh, you know, you can enjoy your early twenties and your late forties, and yeah, well, got it, it's a lot more financial backing to go do trips, and you know, you can live your early twenties and your forties now. Yeah, well, and yeah, exactly. Because turning forty-two here in a couple of weeks, and in three years, we're going to be empty nesters as both kids are going off to college. Ooh, what does that so feel like? Uh, weird. Like, we're, we're too young to be empty nesters, but then we're like, all right, we got two kids going. Because 
our kids are 14 and 15. We got a freshman and sophomore, but my son is an overachiever and he's got his plan to finish high school in three years and graduate with his sister. Oh, well, good for him. Congratulations. So like, all right. And he just let us know this. So like, thanks for letting us know ahead of time as we start thinking about how the heck we're going to get you guys both through college. Right. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I want to go to Georgia Tech to be an aerospace engineer. And we're like, oh, boy. okay. Yeah. So it's like, okay, Georgia in-state tuition versus Georgia out-of-state tuition. Looks like we're moving to Georgia your junior year, you know, so that we get established residency, and, no you know, but it's like, oh boy, now, but yeah, we're, we're looking at going in th three years, they're both going to be in college. You know, what do we want to do and where do we want to be is yeah, the question. Are they, uh, are they hockey players as well? Uh, no, my, my daughter's very much into art. Um, I mean, she played some volleyball and basketball, but she, she, she's artistic, but my son's a baseball player. Um, okay. You know, if Minnesota had house league hockey, he would have played house league hockey. Okay. But he looks at his buddies, you know, all the way down in the mites where they skate several times a week. And, you know, uh, he had an opportunity to play for Matamidi four or five years ago. They needed a goalie. And I was like, okay, do you guys have association equipment? And they're like, no. I was like, well, that there's a, you know, red flag for us. But I yeah. still put it out there. It's like, we'll go to play it again. We've got resources. He fits some of my stuff. Is like not, you know, if, if you want to play, we'll make it work. And he goes, they're skating, you know, most nights of the week. He goes, and their practices don't start till nine o'clock. I go to bed at nine o'clock. It's like okay. He's like, it's it's too much of a commitment for me. I said, okay, that that's fair. That that is actually pretty mature for his age. So right. he had the opportunity because, you know, we we had the backyard rink during COVID and before COVID. Me and the neighbor always we. We took, built the rink, but it was usually in their yard, but then it moved over to our yard because we had more flat space after I put the wall up. Um, and every time he's out on the pond or backyard rinks, he's always putting the pads on. So he, he's a goalie by nature, uh, yeah. whether or not he's played organized hockey or not. Um, he, he's a goalie. Um, not, not a bad skater for not having any lessons or, you know, playing organized hockey. He's, he's pretty decent. Well, that's incredible. It's good to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, and who knows? Maybe, maybe once he gets older and, you know, is old enough for the beer leagues, maybe, maybe he'll be like some of my teammates and just pick it up on his own because, you know, baseball will be over at that point. Who knows? That's where they get you. But, yeah, e exactly. And, and it's funny because, yeah, if you're a baseball player, you, you can go play softball. But for most guys, by the time they're out of their 20s, the softball days have passed them. They, they've gotten their fill. You don't see too many 30, 40 year old softball guys out there the way you do 30, 40, 50, 60 year old hockey players still going out there every week, still playing as if they're, you know, mites still. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I look forward to uh, that, uh, the story of the guy in Duluth playing into his mid 90s. Uh, yeah. I think past uh, this, this last year. And yeah, we, Mr. Sertich. And he was playing hockey the week he died. Right. And I, me and my wife watched the the story on the news and she looked at me and went, yeah, you're, you're going to be doing that same thing, aren't you? And yeah, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be the same way. And, you know, will I be a goalie at that age? Probably not. There will be a time where I got to start skating out, but I'll probably be the defenseman stepping in front of shots because old habits are hard to break. I, I know that. Um, but I, I hope to at least play goalie for another 20 plus years. It's not out of the cards for me. I'm healthy. I, you know, aside from a somewhat nagging back injury, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you're doing fine. yeah. You know, you're better safe than I am at this point. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because we talk about moving South, you know, my wife is when we first started talking, we were talking about the Nashville area and she's like, are you okay moving? You know, will you be able to play hockey? It's like, Oh, I've already been in contact with bones down there who I've had on the <laughs> podcast. The predators e-bug is like, he said he could get me on a beer league team. Like I'm, I'm okay. They, they got a good scene. And then we started talking about Atlanta and I was like in Northern Atlanta suburbs. It's like, there's three rinks. Looks like they got a pretty good beer league scene there too. I'm okay. And now we're looking at Knoxville. It's like still okay. You know, there, there's been a few, areas memphis has been floated because houses are pretty cheap down there i'm like 
eh, there's rinks, but uh, I'm not crazy about the Memphis area. Uh, and she's like, okay. And then Dallas was floated around. I was like, yep, still okay with Dallas. But there's yep. been a few areas where I'm like, yeah, I'm not too crazy about it. And she's like, why not? It's like, not much hockey down there. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, and it, it gives me hope too because uh, at some point with with all the ailments I've had, I'm sure the cold weather's going to start to hurt at some point in my life. And uh, you know, you talk to guys and you see guys on these sites like uh, Bronzy. I'm sure you've probably had him on. He's not a, yet. No. Not yet. Man, that guy is so personable. Uh, I talked to him during the pandemic because I thought about, uh, like, Nick the goalie. He's got his yeah. own TikTok deal. Um, Bronzy's kind of a, a Facebook celebrity. Yeah. And I messaged him back and forth and actually got on the phone with him right, uh, same day. He's such a great guy. He's a really personable guy. He, he invites you out to California to go skate. He's got gear for you. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Durst on the other coast. Um, yeah. he's well, one that I've talked back and forth with a lot and there's hockey out there too. Yep. Yeah. It's, there's hockey in a lot more places than we realize. Cause she, my wife even brought up, you know, well, what about Alabama? And I was like, well, it depends on where in Alabama. I know there's hockey. Cause I have a uh, friend from grade school. Her brother played high school hockey and everything else. And she now lives down there and her, she's got her boys in hockey and she's like, it's bigger than I would have thought down here. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, it, it depend, depends on where we go. Um, but my wife knows that no matter where we wind up, there's got to be hockey available for me and not just like low level beginner hockey, but okay hockey at least to keep right. me. At least okay. Yeah, it, it, at least okay. And the rink has to allow beers in the locker room or at least the parking lot. Because there you go. When I had bones on, uh, I th- he was on episode one. And I asked him, you know, what's the worst post game beer you ever had? And he goes, I was up in Minnesota for a game and the guys want to know if I want beer after the game. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, we had beers in the parking lot in February. What's wrong with you guys? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, well, what rink were you at? Cause some, some rinks, that's the only option we have, but like the super rink, they're just like, yeah, just make sure they make it into the garbage can and you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's tough. You know, you, you play those late games. You got the 1040 start. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's usually Sunday, Monday nights. And uh, the guys that I play with on Monday nights, it's always been a longstanding tradition. It's like T-Ball, who's got the beer this week. And uh, yep. it'll be negative 30, and the the beer will freeze before you finish it. And all right, yeah. it's one and, one and done tonight, but, you know, we'll give her hell next week. Yeah, it, it's nice when you get those er- – <laughs> early games toward the end of the uh, winter season when, when youth hockey is over already and they start giving you the six o'clock games, it's like, Oh, we can go across the street to uh, Invictus after the game and have, yep. have some tap beers and said that th- those are always nice because they got really good burgers over at tipsy steer too. So yep, a, a good burger and a beer after the game, I'm, I'm always happy. Yep. Yeah. 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 Clives is always a nice spot to to hit yep. if, you, if you can get there early enough. And, you know, if, if first comes to worst, it's, it's March, April. Well, you got an early game. It's barbecue night and I'll throw the grill on the back of the truck and yep. we'll make a night of it. Yeah. It, it's also funny too, because some of my teammates, if we got the nine o'clock game, they'll tend to go to the brewery before the game, mm-hmm. um, you know, and they're like, well, we know we're, two minutes from the rink. So we, we know we, when we got to come over, it works out pretty good. It's, so yeah, that, those are my teammates uh, in a nutshell. Well, you, you've skated with them, you know how they are. And th- then we got the ballast boys, the the father and son and the nephew who they, they walk in when the Zamboni's hitting the ice and they're usually the first ones on the ice too. Um, <laughs> the, there's been a few, few games where we got, you know, four, maybe five guys in the locker room before, the game, we're like, well, the Zamboni's not on the ice, so we know we got three more still coming. We're, we're good to play right. a game. <laughs> yeah, and that's the scary part as a sub. Um, and I, like I said, I sub for everybody. And sometimes, you know, the message doesn't get conveyed that you got a goalie, and I'm perpetually early. So I get there, and, you know, 10 minutes before the Zam goes on, I, if I got one or two guys in the room, I'm pretty happy, yeah. but uh, when the Zam's half done and you got five skaters, you're going, "Oh boy, is this 
is this what your team's all about or you know, oh yeah we got guys coming then then the yeah. bus goes up and <laughs> you got a well, whole then there's other teams like i got the message a couple weeks back from uh the one team you'll probably know, Creme de la Creme, they wear the Team Russia jerseys. And they're like, yeah, yeah those jerseys didn't age well. They're looking to rebrand for the next session. <laughs> yeah. But, so I showed up and because it was going to be, I was going to basically be playing back to back. It was like, hey, you guys are in need of a goalie. I'll, I'll help you out. Um, and like three quarters of their team was there 45 minutes before the game. It's like, this is amazing. Well, it also turned out two guys found goalies. So I was like, <laughs> okay. And you guys got two goals. He's like, I already got a game. I'll let the other guy play. I'm like, are you right. sure we feel bad? It's like, just let me have a beer while I sit around and wait. And they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then they're like, we got Fireball. We got Pink Whitney's. And I was like, now I know why you guys are at the bottom of the standings in your league right now. Like, you guys are getting sloshed before the game, not after. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was actually a, a Russian team, I want to say it was probably between – uh, 2006 and 2010, most of the guys on the team were Russian. Uh, they spoke Russian on the ice. They had oh guys with the mirrored visors. And uh, this yeah. is Super Inc. had the, the bar upstairs. Hatcher Cafe would serve beer. And yeah. they had all their wives with them. And it was just three of them bringing in tray after tray after tray into the locker room. And I remember getting yelled at in Russian because I they were one of the better teams in the league. I was shutting them out. I'm getting yelled at and heckled from the stands. It was fantastic. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that team, but man, they were so much fun to play against. But yeah, you couldn't you couldn't beat them uh, in the parking lot after they they always stayed to the end of the night and they always won the parking lot battle of who's staying latest. And boy, <laughs> I don't know what they had to do for work the next morning, but. They were uh, conditioned athletes. Yeah, that, that that is the worst part about having the Sunday night games. It's like, we got Monday morning work tomorrow. So one, two beers tops. And, yeah. and that's all right, because you got to drive through Lionel Lakes to get home. And, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't need that hanging over me. Yeah, I'm over in Coon Rapids, so I got the the Highway 65 gauntlet, and then the Highway 10 gauntlet, and then the Main Street gauntlet to go through. So I got to be careful, but uh, you know, it's it's been so much fun to get to know people like you and and everybody yeah. in the league, and to be a little. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm known for for being a little bit goofy and I'm kind of known at the rink, and it's kind of fun to be uh, uh, somewhat of a local celebrity, I guess. Well, that's got to help too with the mask where most of the refs know you by now. So, you, you know, it's like, you don't have to worry about it. It's kind of fun skating so long, knowing some of the refs and their personalities. I mean, Boosh is probably the best one to have on the ice because he's going to pick on you the whole game re regardless. Yeah, uh, but Boosh then there's great. some of the other ones too. And yeah, he, he's, he's funny. The guys, <laughs> guys at the Super Inc. know me so well, like Ron Foyt, he's such a great, Great guy. Uh, he's been reffing up there since the conception of adult leagues, uh, yeah. along with a couple others. Chad's up there. He's been there since day one. Booch has been up there forever. Yeah. <laughs> you guys said I haven't caught names yet, but you know they all know me. I know them. We give each other hell here and there. All oh, the Verplassi family, those guys are always reffing. Yeah. I forget uh, the ref I had this week, but I, the rebounds, just they were bouncing off me. I couldn't keep them in my gloves this week and he comes skates by and goes you need a little more stick on the gloves this week <laughs> it's like yeah yeah i do um he, he was picking on me a little bit but it's like yeah I, I deserve it um and, and then there's been a couple times I, I pick on the refs where you know it's a questionable uh icing cause like you know my guy should have had it but he didn't it's like it's not my fault he's a bad player and can't accept to pass it it should be waved off because he's bad not because he didn't touch the puck and it'll right. just start laughing <laughs> yeah you get those where you got a couple of guys maybe just one or two and they're chasing down a puck and it's yeah. getting close and you almost want the ref to just wave it off because they spent that much energy you know they both need to go to the bench and get a change right afterward but man yeah they tried hard for it let it go <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah. If it's and some of the refs do. Like if you're within ten feet, they're like, no, no icing. 
keep right. playing because yep. you have the time because they don't want to have to skate down to get the puck. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're just you got to remember they're just like us. They're old and out of shape too. Yeah, I, I like the ones when there, there's only one ref and uh, they'll take the time every goal to go into the box, put the goal up on the board because it's like they, they need that rest just as much as we do. Yeah, give everybody a breather. <laughs> yeah, it's like all right, we we see what you're doing there, uh, and we're okay with it. Yeah. Uh, so, so I want to be mindful of time. We've been talking almost an hour. And I don't know if you've listened to past episodes or not, but I end every episode with a list of 10 questions. Okay. Same 10 questions I've asked every single guest from your Bantam goalie to your Hall of Fame Stanley Cup winning goalie. And the first one is, what's the craziest coaching moment from your playing days where a coach just lost it? Oh, man. Uh, Well, when I played junior hockey, um, just to protect some namesakes, uh, we won't tell you what teams I played for or who it was, but, uh, we had a fundraiser where, uh, one of our coaches beat up one of our sponsors. Uh, so that didn't go over very well, but that same junior team, um, a coach who had not been a coach very long was a player for a long time in the league. Uh, tried to jump up, fight, fight in the stands. Um, and you got stuff like that from the junior hockey days, but my old man was always the worst growing up. You could hear his <laughs> voice booming out in the parking lot. So, you know, he got kicked out of more games, I think, than anybody else. And he ref with half the guys that kicked him out. So it was even more fun. So if you played junior hockey, we'll, we'll keep the uh, teams anonymous, but did you play in that junior B league, the MJHL then? here? I- in- Okay, that, that makes more sense because when I played at St. Mary's, we would schedule games against those teams yep. or our JV team. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that sounds on par for that league. Yeah, uh, yeah. then you probably know uh, who I'm talking about and what it, team. So It's possible. Yeah, the, the Ice Hawks were always a fun fun team to play against. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had a small league, and, man, it was uh, – if you look at junior hockey today versus what it is now – Holy cow. It, we were rough and tumble and it was a grind. Yeah. I, I still remember we, we would play some of those teams because, you know, not all my act teams had a JV team. So we would round out our schedule with those guys. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was standing, you know, by the red line on the bench right next to the other team's goalie. And one of their guys was trying to start a fight with us. And he looks at me and goes, so do you guys not fight because you're a Catholic school? And I looked at him and he said, no, we don't fight because we're wearing full cages. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, I suppose that 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 explains it. And I just in my mind, I'm going, well, I don't have to worry about you coming to our school and, you know, <laughs> passing the missions standards. Right. Um, but it was funny. We were playing. I think it was the Ice Hawks we were playing. And freak accent. One of the players, he's going into the corner loses an edge and he hit and his, as he's going down his helmet starts to come up and he hits the back of his head right on the corner of the dasher board Oof. and it just splits it open blood's gushing everywhere to the point where when the ambulance came they took him outside and set his head in the snowbank to stop it because they were waiting for a helicopter to come get him and take him up to the city so it was that oh, bad God. wow fast forward to the next year he's now at the school and he's roommates with the kid that he went into the corner with. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, no bad blood there because he even said it was just a freak accident. He lost his footing, but just, you know, crazy how, how things work out that way. Uh, it really is. Too, and I, I think both of them live out in Colorado now um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll come back home pretty soon here. We're uh, We're half legal. Yeah, well, the one is a uh, school teacher out there, and I forget what the the other fellow is a musician. I forget what else he does out there. Um, but yeah, so the next question: What is your favorite all time goalie mask? Oh my gosh! Oh, he, that's really putting someone on the spot because there, there's so many greats. Uh, yeah. You brought Brennan, which is a great one, um, and the names. Since I'm on the spot, the names are going to fleet me, but. Um, um uh, Gary Cheevers is iconic. Um yeah. but you know, my favorite and 
and my favorite goaltender just because he's I think he embodies a lot of myself because I can't let gear go. I, I limp it along as long as I can. Uh, it's Archis Irby. Um, yeah. His mask, I remember being a kid, uh, picking up the the Let's Play Hockey magazine and having Archis Irby put a, an article out there looking for the 1979 Coho helmet. Uh, yep. Hoping somebody had one laying around in their basement somewhere and for some reason that kind of stuck with me, but you know, you got the, the Gillies Graton, uh, tiger mask. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then that's the, what you get. You should get painted on yours is the tiger. <laughs> yeah, I, I've thought about it. I, I have to stay true to the Louis, um, white yeah. solid mask for a while, but I think after some time with it, the way it is once, uh, once I take enough pucks to the head and it starts to crack a little bit, I think maybe I'll uh, send it to your place to have your daughter paint something up on it and, <laughs> and wear it there. I'll represent her artwork. Yeah. So y- you mentioned the Herbe. I, I remember seeing in Goalie's World, he had the same ad in there. Mm-hmm. And I had yeah. that was my first helmet. Mom and dad oh, found okay. one at Sport Mart way too big for me. It just jostled around. And, you know, I sent an email because it was early days of email. And, uh, Hurricanes equipment manager got back to me. He goes, we just found a stockpile in a uh, storeroom of a, a pro shop. He's like, we got 15 of them here. Thank you, but we don't need them anymore. Oh, uh, but yeah, it, it was crazy that, you know, he was reaching out to, you know, the beer leaguers. Like, does anybody have one of these? I love these. Now, the cages, from what I heard and talking to some other goalies, they weren't the Joe Fai cages because it was easier to get those made still. Um, right. Jofa wasn't making them anymore, but they could go to other, you know, mask makers who were making cages and they, they could replicate that, but it was the helmet. He just couldn't get them anymore. But yeah, I, I still have that one sitting in the garage. It's like, that, that one might be worth hanging on to. I kind of want to get one of the, find one of those old cages and put it on there because Kelly Rudy wore the same mask too. Yeah, yeah, and Rudy was a character as well. He was he yeah. was a fun one to watch. Yeah, I, I had him on the podcast early on, and just, such a fun, nice guy. Um, you know, very, very uh, much an advocate for mental health these days too, which is awesome. Yeah, same um, with Malikuk. Yeah, yeah, he's got a podcast specifically on mental health. It's he's talked about hockey on it, but it's very, you know, not a hockey podcast. Uh, it's a good okay. one, though. Um, yeah, uh, there's actually a a charity event going on tomorrow at the Coon Rapids Ice Arena. Um, it's a uh, veterans for PTSD yep. charity game going on. Uh, I try to jump in and play in that, but I'm not a vet, so they said, you know, <laughs> we appreciate you wanting to help out and play, but you know, yeah, you can the, volunteer. That's the uh, is that the Sentinels or the Minnesota Warriors playing in that one? Uh, I believe it's the, well, uh, it's not even the Warriors, I don't think. Um, it's the Minnesota Blue Ox, our yeah. event. And uh, they got a couple of pro uh, players coming. Koibu's going to be there. Yeah. Sutton, Matt Cook, you know, some some pretty big name guys. So it'll be a fun event tomorrow. Yeah, it's it's good for the, that group. I'm, I'm happy for them. So the next question, to keep things rolling, what's your favorite rink that you've played at? All of them. Uh, I uh, <laughs> grew, up, grew up playing at Fogarty Ice Arena, so uh, the the old rink, the South Rink, Fogarty yep. is probably my all time favorite, and that one's really stood the test of time. Uh, there, ha- there hasn't really had to be upgrades done to it. Yeah, they had that goofy electric Zamboni, uh, but they're it, finally retiring because it, not just the electric, yeah. but the corded electric I, Zamboni. I, yep. I just saw the email that they're going to retire it. Yeah, that's finally happening. But uh, now you know, I barely ever play there anymore. The Super Rink's been my home for a long time. But uh, you know, as a as a player, I like the Super Rink because you can always see the puck. Like playing at the U of M Mariucci this weekend, when there's no fans in the stands and the puck gets elevated, you can't really see the puck through the maroon. So that was yeah. kind of. Uh, I like playing at the Super Rink because you can always see the puck. Um, you know. Ice surfaces there in the summertime kind of are tough at the Super Rink, but uh, you know I'm I'm branching out and I'm playing in a lot more arenas now, and I might pick a new favorite next time we talk. 
Yeah, I, I'm always happy when I see on the schedule we're on rinks five or six because those are the two best sheets at the super rink. Right, 100%. Yeah. So what is your favorite stick that you've used? <clears throat> As a goaltender or a skater? A goalie. As a goalie. Um, I don't know. I was partial to a CCM for a while. Um, so something that wouldn't surprise anybody is I'm kind of a scavenger and I only shop at play it again. If, <laughs> if I don't get a hand me down from my buddy, Ronnie Druck, who's a, uh, he's a girls varsity goalie coach for Andover. Um, I lived with him when I was in middle school and high school. And, uh, you know, he, he's still playing, uh, every now and again, but he'll buy stuff in bulk and, Every couple of months, I'll stop over to his place and say, "Hey, I need a new stick. How much? How much tape am I going to have to put on them?" And <laughs> it's the only stick that I don't like playing with is one that's broken half and I can't tape together anymore. Yep. No, I, I get that. And yeah, I'm I'm a foam core holdout. I, I haven't gone to the composites yet. I, I just I, I like the older, the feel of the you know the wooden stick. Yeah, I agree with that. I tried one of the. Uh, the new style sticks, uh, a team that I played for for many years was, was nice enough to buy me one because I refused to buy myself one. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was all right. It lasted a while, but I got mad and well, that was a, uh, probably a couple hundred dollar mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the other thing about like, even a foam core, I can still find them for under a hundred bucks. Um, it's getting harder to do, but I can find them. Pro Sock Hockey, oddly enough, is where I've been able to find the last few, which is nice. Um, but, yeah, the, the older ones, I like them. So the next question is, what's your uh, favorite youth hockey memory? Oh, boy. Um, man, the as a goalie, probably the, the all, one and only glove saves that I ever made uh that first game i played as goalie back in ponies uh the perfect you know kicked the leg out and held that leather high and i could just i had to balance the puck in there because i couldn't close it uh that that might be up there at the top but um once i got into bantam hockey and uh high school hockey family went through a lot of changes uh my dad ended up having a massive stroke at 38 and was in the hospital for well over a year trying to rehab, come back. And um, him and my grandparents never missed a game or a practice. Uh, my grandpa, anyway, my grandma, she, she skipped the practices. But uh, <laughs> that, that first game back uh, for my dad to come and, and watch, uh, he got a standing ovation um, on senior night. Um, no, it wasn't senior night. I can't remember which night it was. It was a, a bigger howdy do for Blaine High School. And uh, the cheer from the crowd when my dad uh, walked down the steps and came on the ice with me was. Uh, That's that, cool. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I remember uh, my grandpa, he would come to my games and uh, he was a Dutch immigrant. So he didn't understand the game. He just loved that everybody was involved because he said, I. <laughs> I go to your cousin's softball games and there's only two people playing at a time. He goes, I come to your games, everybody's involved. Yeah. Um, but he uh, he had hardening of the arteries, so he wound up having both legs amputated just below the knee at different times. So after the second one, and he made, he would come in the wheelchair, but he didn't like sitting, you know, ground level along the glass. He liked to sit above the glass. Mm -hmm. rinks weren't that ADA friendly back in the late nineties, especially right. the old rinks on the South side of Chicago. So he would have the other hockey dads. So and my dad wasn't at every game because he's a fireman. So every third day he's working for 24 hours. The other hockey dads just knew when my grandpa was there, two of the dads had to grab either side of the wheelchair <laughs> and carry the wheelchair up the stands. But it was funny because it got to the point where when he was there, I had to wave to him when I got on the ice. Cause if I didn't wave to him, he's like, he doesn't know I'm here. So I had to wave to him. But when he would come to the games, it got to the point where like all my teammates, as they came out, they would wave up to my grandpa and he just loved it. He's like, they all know I'm here, not just him. And um, then when he passed away that first game, my grandma, she, uh, 
she lacked the um the sensitive caring bone in her body mm-hmm. she didn't have that uh but as i told my wife you know she grew she was a teenager in holland during world war ii and her family hid jews while under nazi occupation so like i get why maybe she wasn't the most caring person it she had reasons and uh I don't know why, but she knew that first game after he passed away, she should probably come to it. Even though she didn't enjoy the game, she came to it. And it was like, all my teammates, we all came out, we saw her, we waved to her. And it was just something about that. Your, te- your teammates, they, they always kind of know when when to do those things. Yeah, stuff like that speaks volumes and stays with you forever. It, it does. It does. Uh, so the other things that speak volumes are chirps and hockey. What is the best chirp you've heard directed at you, not directed at you? Uh, best one you've heard. You got a face that would make a freight train take a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That yeah, is that's, that one that I will never forget, and I use it all the time. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, the best that's up there, and the best ones I've heard. The other really good one I heard was. Uh, David Hutchins from Engel Magazine, he said his son's goalie coach looked at him and said, you must be really good at dodgeball. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> to hear that from your goalie coach, it's oh. like, oh. <laughs> man, that's a slow burn, too. If the kid isn't quick enough to pick it up right away, man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, my God. that That's, that's so mean. It's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. um, so what is, I wouldn't even say the worst post-game beer. What's the worst in-game beer you've had? Oh, boy. Um, well, we called it the truck beer at the time because it sat in a truck all summer. It was probably 95 degrees, and it was about <laughs> 95 degrees, and it might have been a moose head. So <laughs> it was it was brutal. That was a tough one. But, you know, I got traditions I got to hold on to, and we got her done. Even a cold moose head is uh, not that great. So, yeah, that that is brutal. Um, so when you tape your stick, do you go heel the toe or toe to heel? Heel the toe. And I only tape okay. it once, and that's the only tape it gets. Yeah, so you're you're in the majority there. So normally the next question is what's your favorite number to wear and why? But we already covered that, so we don't have to go over it again. I love, love the neg- negative one. Uh, the last question is what advice do you have for young goalies? Uh, and I, I'm starting to coach youth hockey now and I don't like what I'm seeing from the, um, the mass standards now with every goalie trying to be exactly the same. Uh, don't be a robot. If something feels right and something's working for you, keep with it, have fun with the game, take pointers where you can, but you know, be true to yourself. Play with flair if you play with flair. Be a robot if you're going to be a robot. But, man, go out there and have fun. Yeah, and, you know, I you mentioned that, and quite a few goalies I've talked to, you know, said in the 90s, every goalie, even down to the youth level, was different. Yeah, you could coaches. Tell. Yeah, we had coaches that coached to our strengths rather than right. saying, this is how you should do it. It's This right. is what works for you. It, but so many goalie coaches now – it's like they, they want to have an assembly line and this right. is the, the factory made goalie. This is how it should be done. It's like, no, let, let the goalie have some personality, let them have their own flair, but work to their strengths. Right. You know, and there, there's going to be those weaknesses. You, you can adjust to them. And, you know, when different things come out, like the Panda, try and figure it out. If it works for you, great. Use it. Right. More tools in the toolbox. That, that's why I love about, you know, so be, using uh the two pad stack or even the split saves it's like do i use them all the time no they're tools in the toolbox know when to use them and know how to use them exactly and and that that's the key um but yeah i'm I'm with you there so uh it's been fun chatting where can folks find you on social media if you want them to (laughs) uh the only real social media i have is facebook so darren hansen h-a-n-s-e-n uh, you can tell it's me because it's a picture of me and my son uh, together, and uh, yeah. you'll, you'll see me on GGSU and a couple other goalie sites uh, in the Twin Cities. So if you if you want to find me, you can find me. Otherwise, you know, if you need a goalie, I'll throw you my phone number and and let me know yeah. up for you. 
Hey, it, it, basically, if you need a goalie, you just go to the Twin City Facebook goalie group, and you're one of the first to, to respond half the time. Um, yeah. I, I don't even go to that goalie group now without coming to you first in you know the the DM chat because like if if you're available, I know you're going to skate, and I know you're going to do just fine for my team. If you're reliable. That's great because I've had a guy before that showed up in the second period, um, oh. and is like. I was hurt with, it was like a week or two after I hurt my back. Like I'm literally bedridden at this point. My teammates are like, where's this guy? It's like, I don't, and I even texted him that morning. Like you're good for tonight's game. Right. And for whatever reason, instead of like a six o'clock start, he had in his phone at six 30. It's like, so this morning when I said six o'clock start and you're oh. like, yeah, good. You still is like, okay. Um, Stuff happens, yeah. but if you want me there, let me know the time and rink, and I'll show up. Yeah, which I'll, I'll probably be reaching out to you uh, in February. I'm going to go to the um, Carolina Hurricane Stadium Series game with my dad. Oh. Uh, so th- that that's a Friday game. I'm going to fly back – or a Saturday game. I'm going to fly back Sunday. But uh, I don't know if my plane will be in in time or if I'm going to want to skate after, you know, a long weekend of traveling. So I, kn- I know that weekend I'm going to need a sub. So we'll, we'll be right, talking well, for that one. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, and I know my my teammates will will be happy about that. I, I I'll I'll let that be a a pleasant surprise for them. I won't tell them ahead of time. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very yeah. much. Well, it's been fun. Enjoy uh, shoveling the snow because, but you said if you are out there already, you probably need a second second pass. I I get to go out there for the first pass after dinner here. All right. Well, good luck to you. Don't slip and fall. Oh, that's I'm teaching the kids to use a snowblower, so I just have to oversee right now. <laughs> that's the best place to be. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Have a great night. You too. Bye now. Darren is a true character of the game, and it's crazy I haven't actually met him in person since he is the guy usually subbing for me. Be sure to look him up on Facebook and find him in the GGSU Facebook group. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube simply by searching for Wash Up Goalie and I'll pop up. Visit washupgoalie.com for some great hockey-related content, my beer league hockey video highlights, and of course all podcast episodes. If you want some wash up goalie or tendy talk apparel for Christmas, be sure to visit my Threadless shop by clicking the merchandise link on the website. If you like this podcast, go listen to the BLPA Big Show. It's the OG BLPA Podcast Network show where a couple of beer league players talk beer league hockey, draft experience shenanigans, and exploits from around the game. Be sure to check out the full lineup of hockey related podcasts on the Hockey Podcast Network as well. There are too many lists here, but shows like the Shark City Podcast, the Keeping Up with the Krakens Podcast, and the Kraken Pod can all be found. If you're looking for something good to read, get yourself a subscription to Tendi or Vintage Tendi Magazine. Published quarterly, the magazine takes a deep dive to an 80s or 90s era goalie. In the first six issues, they've covered Felix Potvin, Grant Fuhr, Tim Shoveldate, Jocelyn Tebow, Ken Reggett, John Van Beesbrook. Episode 20 guest. Mask painter and creator Don Strauss, and the latest issue covers Darren Poopa. I need to thank the band Zambonis for allowing me to use their music on my episodes. You can download their music on iTunes and listen wherever you stream music from. I'm always working on lining up other goalies to talk to. If you are a goalie or have connections to a goalie who I should talk to, shoot me an email at washupgoalie39 at gmail.com or send me a DM on social media. Let's not forget... If you're a brand that wants to sponsor the show, be sure to reach out to me. Be happy to talk. And finally, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment on the podcast platform you're listening on. It's a quick action on your part that helps others find Tindy Talk. So, until next time, keep your stick on the ice and your body square to the puck. Out catches on
good news. 